In 1872, the site of the United States' most intense natural disaster became a national park. It was that year when Yellowstone became the first national park in the United States. President Ulysses S. Grant and geologist Ferdinand B. Hayden had thought that the beautiful natural wonders of the area needed to be protected. Rampant and destructive commercialism was taking over the U.S., and having seen how other beautiful areas had already been spoiled by people wanting to make a quick buck, Hayden fiercely advocated for protecting Yellowstone. Little did he know that Yellowstone may actually destroy itself, with or without profiteers. A tranquil park? It's an active supervolcano and one of the largest volcanic systems in the world. It's not like they didn't know that the whole area was volcanic at one point. In 1870, an expedition had climbed to an area high enough to visually recognize that Yellowstone was actually situated in a massive crater. They even recognized that lava once flowed in the area. At the time, it was estimated to be between 50 and 75 miles across, so they knew something huge had happened here. Those early explorers weren't too far off. At its widest point, the oval-shaped crater or caldera measures 40 miles across. They also thought that the volcano was extinct. They were wrong. Yellowstone sits above a spot in the Earth's mantle where columns of hot, molten plumes of liquid rock rise to form volcanoes in the planet's crust. This spot is called a hot spot, and it's been home to three volcanic explosions that we can trace. The first happened 2.1 million years ago in an area now known, rather unthreateningly, as Huckleberry Ridge. That event is thought to have deposited over 8 feet of ash in the surrounding areas and spread from California to Minnesota. The second eruption was 1.3 million years ago at Mesa Falls, and the last major eruption was 631,000 years ago at the appropriately named Lava Creek. Geologists place these eruptions at between 600,000 and 800,000 years apart, and it doesn't take a mathematician to see that 600,000 years is up. Together, these eruptions and other geological events, like the 80 or so other non-explosive eruptions that have occurred in prehistory, collapsing ground, erosive ice and water flows, and faulting, have shaped the Yellowstone Plateau that we know today. Compare these eruptions to ones we've actually been alive to witness. The Mount St. Helens eruption in 1980, for instance, let loose 0.67 cubic miles of rock and other material in a massive landslide, followed by a blast that traveled at 300 miles per hour. It leveled forests, darkened the sky, and damaged 200 homes. When everything was settled, the volcano was 1,300 feet shorter, and a million Olympic swimming pools worth of volcanic junk spread across the 232 square miles. That's about the size of Chicago. By comparison, the results of the massive volcano eruption at Huckleberry Ridge involved almost 588 cubic miles of material across a nearly 6,000 square mile area. That's all of Connecticut, plus some areas of neighboring New York. Nobody would miss Poughkeepsie anyway. Poughkeepsie. I don't like this word, Poughkeepsie. It's only natural to err on the side of caution after learning that Yellowstone National Park is just one big supervolcanic system. Mark Stelton, the deputy scientist in charge of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, addressed concerns about when another eruption could happen in an update on the U.S. Geological Survey website. Based on forecasting methods, real-time monitoring, and historical data, Stelton explained that the annual probability of an eruption is less than one one-thousandth of a percent, and that the next one is at least a few thousand years away. And if and when it does happen, we'll see it coming. Former scientist in charge of the YVO, Jake Lowenstern, explained, Typically, volcanoes give weeks to months of warning prior to their initial eruption. Volcanoes like Yellowstone typically take even longer. But if and when it does happen, a supervolcano eruption at Yellowstone would change the world. Most notably, beyond the immediate death and destruction and action movies it would generate, the climate would change because of how much ash it would produce. In the meantime, the most likely events to occur at Yellowstone are hydrothermal explosions and lava flows. Like the Yellowstone Biscuit Basin event in July 2024, hydrothermal explosions are usually small and only happen every few years. Lava flows are also pretty common, accounting for almost all of the volcano-related activity in the park and causing minimal damage outside of the area. But ultimately, it's only a matter of time before the next earth-shattering explosion. Fortunately for us 21st century humans, it's going to be a long time.